Hello and welcome back to the channel. So today's video is the international homebrew big brew. Um, basically the American Homebrew Association do uh, an international homebrew day um, and like it's said like the word international you know straight across the world. I'm in the UK so over in the UK May the 7th 2022 international homebrew day and if you pledge to it then you uh, basically get the recipe to brew for the day. It's like a night, you don't have to brew that recipe, it just give you an idea of uh, what to brew. Um, so I thought, okay, um, I did the pledge and I chose a recipe which was the Dark Inception, which is a Imperial Porter. And the, the one on there, the, the recipe they sent was uh, for Raspberry Imperial Porter, but I've taken the raspberry out and I'm going to use cherry. I think I prefer cherry in a beer than I do raspberry. Uh, I don't mind raspberries as a fruit, but just in beer I'm not the biggest fan. Um, it could bring a little bit scenty floral, which uh, yeah, just that's just personal. Um, also, because the ingredients, I pretty much had everything uh, but the chocolate malts, so I basically switched them out with um, some Carafa, um, Carafa 2, Carafa 1, um, I was asking for like um, the double, sorry not the double roasted, the Wyman chocolate wheat and the White and the Simpsons chocolate malt, so I just substituted them with Carafas, um, just to really try and bring some of that flavour there, and reading on the Carafa um, sites, the special Carafas, they can bring them sim very similar flavours and yeah, I could substitute. Anyway, so what I'll do, let you watch the brew day. It's the first time I've talked through the brew day. So as I'm doing the brew, I'm talking through the process because the whole thing about the uh, International Home Brew Day is trying to also pass on your experience. So normally uh, my brew day footage is just music and some text well this is going to be actual me talking through steps and processes on the day which was today i'm absolutely shattered for doing that so a lot of filming and cutting and editing to get this out for the 7th of may 2022 okay hopefully you'll enjoy it and i'll see you in a minute i just want to say as well that the uh the big about the big brew um it's was in 1998 may 7th was announced before Congress as National Homebrew Day, the American Homebrew Association created a big brew as an annual event to celebrate National Homebrew Day around the world. Um, at the moment, there's 51 states and territories that are involved in the pledge to brew. There's also 859 participants. That's basically asking, they ask you when you pledge what volume you're going to brew. Obviously mine's a small volume. Uh, so at the moment there'll be 6,413 gallons being brewed on that International Home Brew Day within 30 countries. So just a little bit of stats as well. Just getting the uh, strike water up for the mash temp. A little bit higher than uh, what I'm going to mash in at, but once you put the grains in, that temp starts to drop down. So I'm just trying to hit the sweet spot, 70 degrees, then I'll put the grains in. And there we go, that's the sweet spot. So now grains going into the pan, straight into the, the bag. I'm going to stir it to prevent any dough balls. That's a thing we don't want really. So let's get the grains in. Keep stirring. Got a helper, Mrs. B's pouring the grains in while I'm stirring. Just helps for video purposes. That's what I say anyway. <laughs> Add in my salt. 
helps with uh, getting the target profile for the water. Uh, I've gone for London water profile on this as it's a uh, porter. So hopefully it'll reach the right pH for me. Well, in that ballpark anyway. And uh, yeah, that's hopefully helps with the finished mouthfeel. So mashed in, just hit it's oh, coming up to the 68, which is me mashing temp. So now pull my probe out. I'll put my lid on, and then I'll put some towels around it and leave it on the stove, stove top. Brewing, and that's going to be set. I'm going to mash this for about 90 minutes today. Um, the boil is also going to be uh, a 90 minute boil. So just start to put some towels over the pan and set a timer. Okay. So we've done 90 minutes mash. So now, really, just give it a quick stir and then strain the bag using the, uh, the rack. Just measured the temp, it's lost about one degree over 90 minutes, which is absolutely fine, no concerns. So hopefully we're extracting as much sugar from them grains. So yep, so now I'll uh, strain over the rack and then get to a boil. Okay. Okay, so the best thing to do here is uh, try and squeeze the actual grain bag get as much out as you possibly can and I use the rack and the pan lid just to put a little bit more pressure on as you'll you'll see now As you can see, strain into the pan, gentle squeeze, get as much of that liquid out, like wort now, we can call this wort now, as possible. And then we've got to try and get up to boiling temperature once we've got all liquid. As you can see now, put the pan on and squeeze them. It helps you to put a bit more pressure on, so I like it, and also stops your hands from getting a little bit hot. So what I'm going to do now is get a little bit of this pre-boil wort, and then measure the gravity. And that's sort of telling me where I'm at after the mash. See in there. So you can see my water starting pH is around about 7.7, about 7.6. So it's about 7, you know, 7.6 sort of area. So I've got to get that down to about 5, between 5.2 and 5.6 for the mash. So we're on about 5.6, it's going between 5.5 .5 and 5.6. So I'll, I'll go with that. That's not too bad. Suppose one trick I want to share with the stovetop brewer is because you're doing it in your kitchen and if you, hopefully you've got a window nearby to where your stovetop is, use a fan. Helps get all that steam out and it stops it condensating in your kitchen. So, get some sanitizer. This is an 11 litre demijohn or carboy. Get some in and then start shaking it around. I do this now for the next couple of hours, just grab hold of it, shake it around, and just make sure it's okay. Whilst everything's going on in the background.
So, what you can see now, that's just coming up to the hot break. Holistic foam is uh, proteins. Um, you can stir this back in. You just got to make sure it doesn't, you know, rise and then boil over. But that's just going to go back into the beer cells at the bottom. At the end comes the uh, trub, trub or trub, whichever way you want to say it. Uh, but this is going to be a 90 minute boil. So what I need to do now, my first hop addition is uh, 60 minutes. So what I do, I set a timer for 30 minutes and then that's 60 minutes from there. So you put your first hop in, 60 minutes. So 30 minute timer now and I'll have 60 minutes left on the boil. So that's what I'll do, set a timer. 30 minutes, then add my first edition of Cascade Hops. So we're at the 60 minute mark now. I've got my Cascade, 11 grams of Cascade at 60. Smelling really citrusy, piney. Wish you had like a smelly vision. Um, smells fantastic. So these are going to go in. I'm not using a hop spider or filter. Okay with that. Put them in, and then 45 minutes for the 15 minute addition. Okay, so now we're at the 15 minute mark. So let's see, cascade again. 15 minutes. Actually, a smaller amount, so it's just a little bit of uh, flavour and aroma, to be honest. So it's 15 minutes left of the boil, and then it's just going to transfer it to the pan to cool. So, now's a point as well to add the maltodextrin. This is just to add some unfermentable sugars really. Um, and it just helps with uh, body in the finished beer. Scrape that in. See how the steam affects that, sticks to the, to the bowl. So yeah, I'll stir that in. So now we're at the end of the 60 minute boil. Turn it off. And then what I'm going to do, it's not got any Whirlpool additions or any dry hop in this beer. Um, it's going to have cacao nibs um, and cherries added into the fermentation. Um, more than likely at, near the end of the fermentation. Uh, but I'm going to do like a Whirlpool anyway. Because what, what I'll try and do now is I'm going to put the lid on this. Give it a good Whirlpool. And then let it settle for about... 20 minutes before I transfer it out into the cooling pan um, but what the whirlpool will do was keep a lot of them hops and all the proteins in the center and then it'll avoid coming out on I'd say about 80% of it will avoid coming out of the tap um, so that's the idea here is just to get the whirlpool going and get all them proteins and hops do a little cone in the middle as it cools. Okay. So what I do, I have a pan, and now there's a bag in there, and there's the food grade tubing, um, which I connect to my boil pan, and then into this pan, I sanitize this one. This has been boiled, so I've boiled that, and now I put star sun in, and I sanitize it, and then I transfer the hot wort into this and then this is a pan that I use for cooling. So basically the tap through the hose into the cooling pan through the mesh bag. Okay so the next step is getting the pan, cold water in the sink and what I've got is I use frozen water bottles. Saves really making ice, wasting ice. Just put these back in the freezer when they're melted. And uh, yeah, so I'll leave that now. Keep emptying it probably about three times to fill the sink. Uh, and then by that time it's cooled down to temperature to go and ferment it. Okay. Okay, so now it's time to prepare the yeast for the beer. Well, so for the words, then the yeast will turn it into beer. Um, so the Dark Inception, which is the uh, big brew for the uh, international home brew day recipe, uh, once you sign up to the pledge you get the recipe, um, asked for like a Cali, California yeast. Um, so this is the yeast that I harvested from the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. I 
brewed a pale ale, the Sierra Nevada, and before that, I harvested some and then put it into. This is now built again on another yeast starter. It's looking really healthy, smells great, no problems at all. So I'm going to use 250 mils of that. And then the 100 mils goes back. And if I want to use it again, I build another starter. So that's how I do my yeast and just keep it going that way. So I've sanitized the jug. So that's been sanitized. Put that on the scale. I'll then make sure I sanitize the cling film, which will go over the jug. And all I need to do now is with this yeast, I've got to give it a shake, try and get all that yeast back into sus suspension, and then I can measure it out 250 mils. So you can see, see the yeast on the bottom there. You can see how active this is. So you can see now, I've got that yeast in suspension. So what I'm gonna do now is take off the foil lid Pour 250 into me sanitized jug. Okay, and then the rest of that in there will be put into a sanitized container and then into my fridge. And then when I want some California yeast again, I'll do another starter and off we go. That's what I, that's how I do. So there we go, 250 mils of yeast. Sanitize the cling film. Put this over the top of my... There we go, the jug. And that's the yeast ready to be pitched into the work to make the beer. Okay, so now it's time to <coughs> strain the work after it's cooled to a good room temperature into the fermenter. Lovely colour. then it'll be uh, time to pitch the yeast. But this also generates oxygen because I'm doing it through the filter, through the funnel, a little bit of height, getting plenty of oxygen introduced for the yeast because that's what the yeast likes. Back it all in. Smells great as well at this point. So, so it's time to pitch yeast. So the yeast I've just prepared, 250 straight into that funnel, into the beer. All I've got to do now is put the blow off tube on and let it ferment. Right, so now Dark Inception, the uh, Imperial Porter, is in the FV. I only do small batch. Um, this is going to give me about six and a half litres at the end of this because I did it in my bigger demijohn because the pan I use is only about 17 litres and I don't do small grain stuff, small stove top. So this is it. This is the blow off tube. This is what I've basically made myself. Goes into a container which has got star sun in. You can see the tube goes all and then you've got the beer in there. Um, just a couple of things, I, I uh, added carafa malts because I didn't have the chocolate malts uh, but everything else, I'll say that, no everything else because I'm going to put cherry in it rather than the raspberry as well. So yep, yeah, so that's the end of the brew day and hopefully there'll be a video to follow, a grain to glass but I'll get this out as a uh, bit of the, the big brew video. Okay, cheers. Hopefully, if you're still with me, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Um, yeah, it was uh, just really me talking through the video and bits and bats. I, don't, I won't do that every time. I think I'll just go back to the text and the music in the background for my grain to glass videos. Um, but really, so International Home Brew Day, celebrate the 25th annual brew day, big brew on May the 7th, 2022. Held on the first Saturday in May, 
big brew for National Homebrew Day is an opportunity to fire up the kettle and raise a glass of the greatest hobby there is, homebrew. Um, continue to support homebrew when you join the American Brew Association. I haven't actually done that yet. I'm going to look into that. Um, so really, it's, it, like I said, it's just about trying to pass on that experience and you know, get other people involved in home brewing. And, and, and for me, I do all my home brewing as a bang on about on the stove. Uh, most of my batches, uh, five liters. The one I just brewed was gonna, it's gonna give me about seven, six and a half to seven liters. Uh, just added a bit more grains and a bit more water in my 11 liter demijohn. Um, don't know why I put that in front of me. Don't know. This is one of my home brews. I'll crack this open in a minute. Hope it doesn't. Oh, it's not overcarbonated because this is a. I'm just going off on a tangent. Let me finish. So, my home brew is basically done in a pan like this. We have a tap on it, I have a tap on it, it's got some insulation on it, and it's on a stove. This is a 17 litre pan, and just, just like to show really that you can do it with a pan. You don't need that tap at all, and you don't need that insulation. This is just me progressing and getting different equipment as I go along. Um, and you can see how simple I can, uh, it is, you can buy crushed grain, you get a bag, use water, get some hops, get some yeast, you have to, no, no way would I actually do what I do about the yeast, just get some dry yeast, um, get some plastic bottles, freeze them, put them in the sink, cool it into a demijohn or into a bigger demijohn like I do, ferment it and then onto the next stage of either bottling or kegging. I just, I just wanted to really show that it can be easy and uh, hopefully if you've watched this and you're thinking about home brewing, hopefully I can sort of make that look more well, that video footage made it look a little bit simpler, um, but I'm open to any questions if you uh, if you want to I'll put them below. That's not a problem at all. Um, so that's really let's that, open this home brew. God, I'm really itchy nose now. I don't know if it's a bit of hay fever starting. So yeah, it's been a long day, been a long brew. Um, this is uh, one of my it's a kettle sour black brew beer, which I did basically last year, last August, bottled it in September. Um, and again, this was done on my stove. Everything I do is on my stove, but I think because it's it's got wild yeast in, it could on video froth over. Let's see. There we go. It just slightly did, so it wasn't too bad. So yeah, this is a wild fermented one. There you go. See it? And uh, it's a nice. Well, it's, it's quite, after a day like that, it's an enjoyable drink. See the uh, whoa, get that in there. See that yeast there? Uh, all that yeast has got in some, some blackberries. What colour that is? So it's a kettle sour beer, and it's a blackberry one, and it's quite refreshing. Cheers. that brew day to be honest. Apologies if the glass is not the best is it? That's lovely. You can see that yeast there as well. It's all gone in. There's nothing wrong with it. It's perfect. Um, so yeah, so yeah, not much more to say. Um, I wanted to get involved. I pledged. I got the recipe. Made it my own in a way. Um, it'll ferment. I'm not too sure yet. I may bottle it and make it in a keg. Not too sure what I'm going to do, but what I will do, I'll follow up this video with a grain to glass, and that's going to be a bit of a long video um, because it's going to have obviously that same footage, and it's going to have me tasting the beer um, and having a chat again, I suppose about how it came around. Um, but yeah, so to the homebrewers out there, happy International Homebrew Day, and for anyone who's thinking of doing it, come on, join in, it's fun, uh, and then for all. The rest of my viewers who just want to come and have a laugh and maybe talk about beer, um, I apologise, it's been a long one if you've lasted this long. Okay, I'll see you on the next one, and cheers. <laughs>